So by end of this video, you're going to learn how to call and authenticate GCP APIs from your code. Either your code is running from on-premises or you know if your code is running from some other cloud. Hey guys, welcome back. My name is GK. And if you are new to service accounts, I highly recommend watching my first video. Before I get into the solution, I would like to ask you guys a simple question on service account. What are the maximum service accounts you can create per project? So the four options are no limit, 550, 200, and 100. So if you know the answer, or you can just give a try and try to answer that in, in the comment section. In the last video, we have created service account and we have given permissions to a service account. And we have used a service account within the compute engine. So we, we also looked at the default service account and we also created our own, our own service account and attached that to a compute engine. So in this video, the use case is that you have an application that is running on-premise and you would like to use that application to talk to GCP APIs, authenticate GCP APIs and perform certain operations. For example, you know, uh, my application is running on Windows, which is on-premise, right? Uh, I'm, I'm trying to call GCP and I'm trying to create an object. If that is a scenario, you're going to see how I have to use the existing service account or, or if I create a new service account and create the JSON file, uh, the key and download that JSON file and use that inside my program to call GCP APIs. So certain steps that you do in GCP, uh, which is creation of service account. And I have shown this already in my previous video, how to give permissions. And the third part, which I haven't covered in my previous video is creating a JSON file and downloading the key. So if you go to the console and, and there, there's a very good documentation on this, I'm going to share that uh, in the description. I'm going into the service accounts. Right, so when you go into the service account, you'll see the bunch of service accounts which we have created in my previous videos, right? Now, you'll see that in the key ID, there are no keys for my service accounts because like I've said, you know, I was using the service accounts from within the GCP and I was not calling my application from outside. So if I have to call my application from outside, I have to create a key. So click on any service account here, which doesn't have a key and go to edit section and create a key. All right, so we are going to create a JSON key, which is recommended and then create. So it is going to download. Now I have done one for my service account already and I have given an editor access to this. So these are the three steps that we have to perform in GCP. Now coming to the steps that we have to perform on premise or uh, you know on AWS or anywhere from outside of GCP is if you're using Python, in my case, I'm using Python. So I have to install the client libraries. So I copy this and I have to install that here, which I have already done it before. So it will say, you know, I, I already have this. So if you do not have this, then if you're using Python, then pip install the client libraries that, that are used for uh, cloud storage because I'm using cloud storage in my use case you would have to install that. And it is very well uh, documented in, in Google uh, website. I will, I'll put that link. So the second step is we have to set the environment variable. So there are two ways of using the, the JSON file. So one way is you're going to set the environment variable of the location of the JSON file. For instance, you know, if you're using PowerShell, you would set it as uh, this, like this. In my case, I'm using PowerShell from Windows. So I have set this. So if, you, if you're using Linux, you're going to export that like this, you know, basically the variable here is Google application credentials. So this is what, you know, the, the libraries are going to call, uh, look into for, for the JSON file. The second way, which is a sort of recommended way is that you can explicitly mention the JSON file inside the program. I'll try to demonstrate both ways. If I go back to my editor here, so these two functions which I've created, so one function, and this is my JSON file. So here I'm explicitly mentioning the JSON file. Now, if you look at my second function, so there is no JSON file mentioned here, which means that this is going to look for the environment variable when, whenever this is called. So let's say that I'm going to call my first function, which is explicit, right? And let's see how it's going to work. 
So when I call this function, you can see that it gave me output of all my GCP buckets. So what we want here is the list of buckets, which, which is the output what we got here. So if you go to my storage, buckets, browse, and you're going to see all the bucket names here. So this is executing fine. Now let's say that I comment out explicit. Here I'm trying to create a bucket. So I already have GK1 bucket. So at least I what I'm going to expect from the response of this program is that, you know, the bucket is existing already, right? So let me run this and see. As you can see that it is looking for the environment variable here, right? So this is an expected output because, you know, last time when I ran this program, I have set it in my shell. And since I have added, it's not a permanent variable, uh, you might have to set it again. So in Linux, you will set it in a bash profile so that it's permanent. So in Windows, I have to set it in environment variables. Now I'm going to set that and rerun this again. This is for the PowerShell. All right. So now when I run this program again, you see that you already own this bucket. So this is the output I got, which is expected because you know, as I've, as we can see, I already have GK one bucket, um, which is the bucket name, which I passed here. So let's say I change this to GK two. and rerun this program and bucket gk2 got created so if i refresh this you can see that gk2 bucket got created so this is a common use case so when you join a company and when you're using AWS or Google, you're going to see these use cases more often. Your application will be on-premise and you're trying to connect to the cloud and execute, uh, you know, APIs. You're trying to call the APIs of cloud. So I hope this was helpful. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section or please feel free to re reach out to me. To try this solution in your GCP and let me know if you have any issues. That's all for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Have fun.